Okay, continuing on, uh, this is actually section 8-7, I forgot to say that. Um, one of the first things you should do on these things is see if there is a greatest common factor, before you start doing all the really hard stuff that we just talked about, see if there's a greatest common factor between each of these terms. And in this case, there is. Notice that um, three, this is three times, this is three times one, three times five, three times six. And so we can factor out the greatest common factor of this expression um, first. And if you can do that, be sure to do that first. Save yourself a lot of angst and look for that first. I can factor out three to the side. Now it's x squared plus 5x, because 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. And 3 times 6 is 18. That is so much easier. So now, what are the factors of 1 times 6 of 6? What are the um, factors of that? That add up to 5, all right? And this is the sum. So that, these are what the factors. Um, the factors of 6 that add up to 5, well, that's pretty easy. It's going to be 2 and 3, and they're going to, um, because they um, add up to 5, and those are your factors. So now, I can write this as, um, give myself some space here, uh, 3 times parentheses, this is going to be um, x squared plus 2x uh, plus 3x plus 6. Uh, that's going to be 3. These have an x in common. So here's the x out, in the, out to the side here. I take an x out, factor out the x. I'm going to I'm going to group these things like this. All right, I'm going to factor out an x, and that's going to leave what? X plus two. Double check again. X times x is x squared. X times two is two x. Okay, good. Um, over here, I can factor out a three. And what does that leave? It leaves x, because 3 times x is 3x, and a 2, because three, 3 times 2 is 6. Notice now that I have a greatest common factor within these outer parentheses of x plus 2 and x plus 2. So this is 3, x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, uh, one other thing I should have mentioned on the second example, which I didn't. Um, I just have two more quick examples to go. Uh, by the way, if I erase that too quickly, just go back and replay it, all right? Um, I'm gonna do this next part really fast, okay? If you have um, something like uh, 3x squared minus 17x, plus 20. Um, then um, create your table. And 3 times 20 is 60. So we're looking at the factors of 60. 3 times 20 is 60. And so um, what are the factors of 60 that add up to a negative 17? Now here, this is, can save you a lot of time. Um, notice that this is positive 60. So, but these are negative, this is negative 17, which means that your factors are going to be negative because you're gonna add two things that multiply out to be positive. What two things that are factors of 60, a positive 60, multiply together, give you positive 60, but add up to negative 17? They have to have the same sign, because a negative times a negative is positive, and a positive times a positive is positive, but they have to add up to a negative number. They have to be negative, both of them. They have to be. And so what factors of 60 add up to negative 17? Um, let's, uh, just gonna short circuit this. Um, you've got, I could have, uh, what, negative two and uh, negative 30. Well, well, that's positive 60, but those add up to negative 32. That doesn't help. Um, 
I could have uh, what, negative 4 and negative 15. Those add up to negative 19. Well, that doesn't help. Um, and let's, I missed, I could do negative 3 and negative 20. Um, I missed that one. All right, that's, that's added up to negative 23. That's not useful. The, the what's, how about negative 5 and negative 12? And indeed, negative 5 and negative 12 add up, they multiply out to positive 60 and they add up to negative 17. Okay, so that just saves you some time. When you see a negative sign here, and these are positive, you know it's the negative factors that you're looking for, okay? And then you continue on and you'd have to factor this thing, all right? So 3x squared um, minus 5x minus 12x uh, uh, plus 20. And I, I think this is gonna be uh, 3x squared. I don't wanna spend too much time on this. Um, and then you're gonna group and solve, all right? But I wanna move on to the one last thing before I run out of time here, okay? And so uh, this now I'm on page uh, 512. And sometimes you run into this situ situation right here where things don't factor. It's called a prime polynomial. So um, if you have, I'll just use your example right here to make this point. So if you have uh, 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 and you try to factor this thing all right so here's your table and we've got the um, multiply a and c so 4 times 5 is 20 and so that's the factors what are the factors of 20 and then you add them up well the factors of 20 and they've been negative all right and positive 20 so you know that they have to be Negative, these are positive, positive 20, so they have to be negative factors. So this could be negative 1 times negative 20, which is negative 21. Well, that's not negative 3. Um, what else? You could have negative 2 times negative 10. That's, um, add, that multiplies to 20, but that adds up to negative 12. I could have, uh, what, negative 4, negative 5, and those multiply out to positive 20, but they add up to negative 9, and that's it. There are no factors of positive 20 that add up to negative 3. So this is what's called a prime polynomial. You cannot factor that. Okay, it's prime. It's like a prime number, like 1, 3, 5, right? Um, so it's a prime polynomial. That. Um, that is that. You may want to rewatch some of this stuff because it is rather tricky. Uh, all right. I will talk to you later. Don't forget there's going to be some homework on Math Excel. Woo-hoo.